Okay, good evening, everybody. I'm going to call the select board meeting to order here, uh, Monday, July 15th, 2024. Do we have any additions or changes? No. So, moving on then. Uh, prove the minutes. We have minutes tonight from, oh, and I, I just want to say, uh, from our VLCT trainings that several of us have gone to uh, several times. We do have a select board member who is Zooming in tonight. So if there are any um, non-unanimous votes, I will be taking a roll call. That is uh, a recommendation of the LCT. So I just wanted you to know that that would be a little bit different than what we're used to seeing. So approve the minutes. We have minutes from uh, June 27th. I would so 2024. move. I would so move. So I have um, a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? Second. By the way, Richard, can you hear us? I think you're still muted. Yeah, I got you, Don. Thank you. You can hear us? Yes. Okay, great. So I have a motion by Chris, second by George. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. We have minutes from July 1st, 2024. So moved. I have a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from George. Any discussion in the July 1st minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of the minutes for uh, as presented for July 1st? Aye. 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 And that would be unanimous. Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. Do I have a motion to recess the select board meeting? I would move to recess the select board meeting and open as the Board of uh, Tobacco and Liquor Control. Motion by Chris. Do I have a second? Second. Second by George. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Okay, we are now in liquor and con tobacco control. I believe we just have the one. Uh, Lost Nation Brewery LLC. And uh, Jason, does Jason have any comments on this? I checked with the chief and he has no issues. Okay, so the chief of police is fine with this. So, so we just have the one liquor license. I would make the motion to accept the um, liquor license for Lost Nation Brewery LLC uh, for third class license. Okay, I have a motion by Chris. Second. I have a second by Richard. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 And that would be unanimous. Uh, to have a motion to close the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. I would move to adjourn the Board of Tobacco and Liquor Control. Motion by Chris, do I have a second? Second. Second by George. All those in favor, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. I'll move to reconvene was that, the select board. Was that unanimous? Yes. Okay. So I have a motion to reconvene the select board meeting. By, uh, motion by Chris. Second. Second by George. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor of reconvening the select board meeting, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous as well. Uh, we have in our packet uh, information on purchasing a 2024 Ford F-250 Super Duty. And we have, uh, and a plow. And we have two bids here. We have a bid from Lamoille Valley Ford and we have a bid from New Car Ford of Lebanon for the Ford F-250. I'm just curious, there's a huge difference between the two bids. We're talking about the same vehicle. As far as I know, yes. I, I wasn't involved personally in the bids, but yeah. um, there is a significant difference. Yeah. Yeah, there's a $14,000 14, difference. It is well, pretty big. Does the mid car not have 16000 in it? Mm. Yeah. So yeah. if you look at it, it's actually 73, but it takes out the 16, and I don't believe. And Lamoille Valley, uh, they both they both have a um, 
trade-in. A trade-in. Trade-in. Yeah, they do. And Memorial Valley actually gave us less on the trade-in. They did. Trade-in allowance for 10 years. Yeah. There, there is, there is a, a basically a start of roughly $5,000 difference between the, the top line. New car starts at $65,855 and change. Right. And Lamo Ford starts at $80,000. So that's, that's a difference, really. That's that's a significant difference in where they stock. Right. Just for clarification, this was approved in last year's budget. Correct. This this was a approved budget item. Um, so we knew that it, yeah, it, might, it wasn't going to be an immediate. If I remember correct, the conversation. I wasn't here then. I, I just know that I was told that this That's, was a this was a truck that had was supposed to have been ordered even in a po possibly in a prior year. Yeah. Uh, so it was it was approved last year, and that's why it's coming up in July. That's my recollection too. Yeah. Remembering that it was like twelve or fourteen months to get a truck here. It was a delay in getting yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So. And that we wanted to get on the list right away. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to mention that so that. But it was clear that this has already been in the budget. Of yes. Uh, so when we entertain the motion, do you want the motion for the truck and the plow together? No, um, the plow, I didn't, I, I feel I didn't get enough quotes. Okay. So I'm working on getting uh, some additional quotes to make sure that, you know, there's not a, to find the best price for the community. And so I haven't been able to get that done yet. I've been a little busy. So. Uh, the way I wrote the motion was to approve at the price that we do have, uh, but no more than that. And if, if I can find a better price, then I have the authority to move forward. With that. Okay, great. That was my second question. You want the motion to include you having the authority to purchase? If you will, I mean, okay. that would be the third motion. And just for clarification's sake, these trucks are identical as far as everything in them. Have we talked with Kevin? Do we know? I just. I didn't want to. This this was presented to me literally last week, and I, uh, the early part of the week I was preparing for the storm, serving <laughs> roads, yeah, doing. No, 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 no. So I, I have not been able to clarify or, or to confirm that every, you know, potential. Every everything in the package is exactly the same. Yeah, I'm just curious as to you know, for the highway that we're not, you know, cut our nose off that there's we're, something's not in this truck that we're going to need. My my guess is that what you're referring to does explain the difference in the price, yes, and but that the highway department has brought these trucks to us is suggesting that you know okay, the cheaper that's... truck is probably going to meet their needs, and okay, that's, yeah, that's... the cheaper truck will also so, meet the needs of the taxpayers in so Morristown too. Has reviewed, he has looked at these? Yeah, he signed oh, okay. up. Yeah. That's, that's the information. And I believe uh, I believe Derek. Has reviewed it as well. Okay, there's a couple lines on it. Okay. It, it it probably could have a lot to do with availability on vehicles right now. Some of the they're only make sometimes they're only making a higher end vehicle, and that seems to be my experience at least up here. I think down in Lebanon area you get more of a selection. Good to know. Well, I would entertain a motion. I'll move that we approve the purchase of a 2024. Ford F-250 Super Duty from New Car Ford of Lebanon for a total purchase price of $72,989.36 minus a trade in value at $16,000. Total funds due are $56,989.36. This includes a seven-year warranty. Funds to be borrowed for the truck and plow for five-year term. And to authorize? We're, that's a third motion. Okay. I'll second that. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Do I have any further discussion? One one more clarifying question. What was budgeted in FY25 was a, a five year the, the first year of a five year loan. Purchase of the truck was approved uh, in the budget. Uh, so this, the purchase of this truck was approved in the budget to be purchased this fiscal year. So uh, help me. George, not to interrupt, but George, you're correct. This is yeah. there. Yes. Can you what? hear me? So the way it worked, 
Want to explain that, Sarah? Yeah, this is Sarah Haskins speaking. Can you, can Go ahead, you Sarah. hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, George, you're correct. So the purchase was in the overall like budget, but the pay for five years and doing yearly payments for five years are in the budget. Not the entire cost of the truck. Oh, the I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Okay. No, I, I probably didn't ask it clearly. No, you probably did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. just an expert on understanding what people are really asking. <laughs> yes, you are. Thank you. Any further discussion? Discussion up here. Go ahead. I'm Jerry Throne. I noticed looking at the quotes that uh, the low bidder, I believe, is uh, offering a black truck and the other bidder is offering a red truck. So I'm wondering whether uh, there's any plans to paint the truck, and if so, what that cost is, and whether that's been evaluated against the two different uh, bids. If I may. Go ahead. So uh, they, Kevin did come to me several months ago and asked me what my opinion about that was. Uh, did we wanna spend several thousand dollars more on a red truck rather than a different colored truck? And um, I conferred with a couple of people because before I started this position, uh, I recall that there was comment about police cruisers and wanting them all to match. Um, I feel like it's in the best fiscal interest of the community, at least for the Department of Public Works, that uh, we buy a truck that's you know commonly in color, doesn't need special order of color, um, and we'll save the taxpayers money so i made the management approval to approve this truck as is and there's no plan to paint it thank you i have no problem with that yeah thank you and once again i mean it's, we're talking about fourteen thousand dollars savings here yeah okay. not just for the color of the truck is my guess excuse me the new car because the <clears throat> one mile four is agate black so does the new car be red i don't see it right now The color's not on here. And the, uh, it doesn't list a color on new car. Yeah, new car doesn't have a color. Thank you. I was yeah. like, I didn't think I missed it, but. Yeah. So if you. Yeah, so you're right. The I, I don't even know how to pronounce agate, agate day black. Yeah. For the. Uh, agate. Oh? Agate. Agate. So, yeah. Um, but I did not see a color on this one, but I, I do know that we had that conversation and I approved. Um, so we're, we're under the assumption it's either red or black. I'm just, we don't want some I don't, truck to show I'll be surprised if it is red because they asked me for okay. permission that it not be town color. Okay. Um, just so we know it's not a turquoise or some, you know. You don't like turquoise? It's just going to look on the fleet. That's all. I'm, you know, Southern, I like coordination. <laughs> Any further further discussion? Come on up. Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. I think we had it by used. There's all kinds of used trucks out there. And I know where they're at out west. And I know you don't like the idea, but you know what? We can get them probably $30,000 cheaper. So keep that in mind. Yeah, I think that's really, Tony, that's good advice going forward. I mean, we approved this truck 12, 13, 14 months ago, and you know, we should be, yeah, maybe we should be looking at used trucks going forward. The town's gonna to need more trucks is my guess. When, when we're in Vermont, we know what they all do. So right. yeah. and as soon as you put that sander and that, uh, salt in there you know what it does so yeah you might as well wear out somebody's truck that hasn't been worn out you're pretty sure the choir i mean i'm a f in favor of used trucks as well do we have any idea what's the lifespan on a, one of these trucks well it's we're financing it for five years and it's got a seven-year warranty we typically keep it for the life of the warranty yeah that's what i thought i mean okay we have a we go ahead what, what, Laura, what we found is, is that when, we, when we've when we kept trucks beyond their life expectancy, we're ending up spending, yes. particularly in the tandems and single axles, tens of thousands of dollars to get keep them on the road. We've 
learned a hard lesson in this. Yeah. So if you keep them during the warranty period and trade them, you get the maximum value yeah. of your of your trade, and um, they're on the hook for any major repairs. So yeah, so just thinking this through, buying a used truck, you probably have to get a seven-year warranty on it. You pay a significant premium Probably. for that. Yeah. Not unless it's got ridiculously low mileage. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's a great thing to consider. Yeah. Uh, my uh, name, question is, sorry, with name. this Tom Puglia, is uh, buying these trucks, I think this is the third one in two years, we don't have a mechanic who takes care of those trucks. Well, in the case that these trucks be on warranty, the, the company that's warranting them is going to take care of the maintenance during all, warranty. All the other vehicles we have. We don't have a mechanic on our... I'm not sure how many vehicles we have that are on warranty right well, now. I, I mean, it doesn't matter how many we have, but yeah. shouldn't we have a mechanic? I mean, sometimes we do have to sub that work out. I remember two years ago when our graders were down, we needed to sub that work out. I think, it, I think it depends on, on what needs to get done, Tom. Um, I know that in talking with Kevin and, and looking at the two town garages, um, that the mechanics, you know, do, you know, they grease their own equipment, you know, particularly the uh, backhoe and the excavator. I think they're more than capable of changing oil and doing those types of maintenance issues. Um, I think they also do some their own brake work. Um, but if it's something that they don't have the capacity to do at the town garage, then it's subbed out. I'd like to see some figures on how much we've spent on subbed out. And I also, uh, with, they're unionized now. In my understanding of union, if you're not a certified mechanic, you can't do mechanic work on the vehicles. I could be wrong with that because I'm not a union person at all. I'm not but, seeing that in the contracts. What's that? I've not seen that in the highway contract. Okay. But, uh, but I think, I mean, the towns around us have mechanics on the, on the staff. We don't have a mechanic. And I, I don't know why we do. I, and I also don't know why we have as many people taking care of the village 10 miles roads as we do. And I was wondering if this new vehicle is going to be added to the 10 miles that we have to take care of in the village. So the answer my question, recommendation would be to put this whole thing on hold till all these questions were answered. To, to answer your question about um, town mechanics, um, Waterbury has eight employees in their highway department. Um, they just moved to an eight employee um, town department. Um, they used to have a town mechanic, yeah. and they no longer do because it wasn't cost effective for them. Yeah. So still has a hundred miles. They have more miles than we do. They have seven employees less than we do, and they have a mechanic. So I mean, you know, you could use different towns for different things. But if we have as many employees we have right now, and as many vehicles, which I can't understand why we don't know, maybe it would be in our behoove us to be paying our having a mechanic rather than subbing this stuff out and maybe the vehicles would actually last longer so i'm just that's just my statement thank you tom any further discussion from the board okay we have a motion by chris we have a second by richard i believe you ready to vote all those in favor of the motion as presented all right all right that would be unanimous. Okay, we have three private roads. No, we got oh, yeah. two. Uh, we got two a, more motions. Two more motions. One on the plow, and then one, one authorizing on the plow, one grant. On the, okay. So I would move that we approve the purchase of a plow for the 2024 Ford F 250 Super Duty for a total price not to exceed $9,824, which is the only bid that we've received at this point. And as Brent said, he's going to. Um, get some other bids to see if we can save money. So would your motion be to uh, allow the town manager to purchase uh, a plow, but but for not more than $9,824? That's what I said, approve the purchase of it, not to exceed the eight twenty four. Okay. Third motion will authorize the manager to sign. Just wanted to be clear. Yeah. Do we have a second? Second. I got George, Richard. Yeah, no problem. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Me either, Richard. <laughs>
He can be the third. Any discussion regarding the plow motion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous, Judy. On the third motion, uh, Sarah, Sarah picked up on a change in the motion. Okay. So the third motion where it says I could uh, move to approve Brent Brayman to sign, that's just going to be uh, approve Brent Brayman to approve the financing. So there's going to be no signing. It's going to be because the board will still need to sign the loan paperwork. Right. Thank you, Sarah. So, okay. So I'll move to, to approve Brent Raymond uh, to uh, approve the financing of the loan for the 2024 Ford F-250 and plow for a total of not more than $66,813.36. Loan shall be for a five-year term and the institution with the lowest interest rate of all the bids shall be chosen upon conferring with Sarah Haskins, town treasurer. I have a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by George. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Now we can move on to number three, approving private road names. Uh, we have three private roads. Do we need to approve these separately? I didn't think so. Uh, I know that you did not uh, about a month ago, but um, my proposed motion is just to include them all and we approve the three new road names resulting from 2322 Laporte Road LLC's uh, subdivision application, uh, Aviation Boulevard Solutions Way, Quarry Road, having already been approved by the state of Vermont's E911 coordinator. And I can hand that to somebody if they want the motion <coughs> and if they can read my hand. That'd be great. Yep. Somebody like to read this motion? first page yeah, it's my understanding we're approving these roads uh these are three private yeah. roads by the way we're approving these so that the drb can uh, proceed with a pending application that they have correct okay so i would move to uh, approve uh three uh, road names located at 2322 lakeport road um the first being solutions way the second being quarry drive and Quarry Road. Quar excuse me, Quarry Drive, it says here. Oh, it does? Okay. And uh, Aviation Boulevard. Um, these will uh, not be uh, considered, these are private roads, not town roads. Um, the applicant would like to install the sign and post within the sign location approved by the town. Okay, I have a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by George. Richard, you seem to be muted right now, just so you know. Yeah, I was, okay. yeah, I was just looking at the road names. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, it's all good. Any discussion regarding this motion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 And that would be unanimous. Okay, number four, clarification of facts, uh, clarification of information that was presented at the planning council meeting last week on July 9th. I'm going to pass this over to the town manager. Yeah, so I, I attended a July 9th planning council meeting to just introduce myself uh, to the planning council, thank them for their, their dedication and their work uh, for the community of Morristown. And there were some statements made that concerned me for a number of reasons. Um, so I just wanted to take time today to go over and, and clarify what I've found because I've spent uh, quite a bit of time since then uh, researching and, and providing ample opportunity for information to be provided to me. So this will be a little lengthy and I apologize beforehand, but I want to start off by explaining why. Um, I think that in today's world of memes and social media, it's especially important for people and communities to be keenly focused on facts. For a rural community, understanding facts is crucial to making informed decisions about local issues, agriculture, health, zoning, and many others. It helps prevent the spread of misinformation, which can have significant negative impacts 
on the community's well being and development. By valuing factual information, communities can better advocate for their needs and work towards sustainable progress. So at the July 9th planning council meeting, the zoning administrator stated, the town administration had pushed the planning council to get the zoning changes completed quicker. That the former administration had asked to speed it up many times. That the select board schedule was created by town administration, the prior administrator. The schedule went back and forth with administration to speed it up many times, referring to the zoning schedule. And that if not voted on by July on July 15th, that there would be consequences. Um, it was stated that it is ready to approve the industrial park and funeral home from the DRB, but since they are under the 2024 zoning, they won't be released until the zoning is voted. That work is going to slow down in the community, construction jobs in town will stop, and slowdowns in town ha uh, happening now will build over time. So as a current town manager, I wanted to understand, first of all, how such breakdowns and communication could occur between administration and the zoning administrator. I also wanted to inquire about why I wasn't informed that the former interim manager was pushing for the planning council to speed up the zoning changes schedule. And I wanted to ascertain the facts to ensure that the residents of Morristown are accurately informed. So I requested emails, communications of any sort to confirm what was stated from the zoning administrator and others asked for video of any meetings um, and after several hours of reviewing emails and select board meetings that were provided to me one i could find nothing that showed that the former town administration pushed the planning council to speed up their zoning schedule i found nothing that showed that the former town administration had created or approved the zoning changes schedule instead all the information i can find shows that the zoning administrator created it i found nothing that showed the select board accepted or approve the zoning changes schedule. Certainly there was no motions made. I did find evidence that, the, that both the former town administration and select board requested an amendment to the 2022 to 2030 town plans transportation chapter of four sentences. And I'm gonna read those four sentences. Therefore, this plan encourages open communication with neighboring communities through the state route 15 and state route 100 pass. The town is supportive of the designated village center and downtown initiatives which strive to enhance pedestrian and bicyclist safety. We support the reduction of the speed limit around the tra rail trail crossing in the town of Johnson that provides additional bike and pedestrian safety. Morristown will work collaborative, co collaboratively with our neighbors to ensure they are made aware of any negative impacts to our community which may occur because of slowing traffic outside the village center and or designated downtown. The amendment would take maybe 10 or 15 minutes for the planning council to consider and approve and wouldn't impact the planning council's diligent work on the zoning changes. One of the select board meetings I reviewed, reviewed was held on February 5th, 2024, where the select board had an agenda item regarding the town plan and Eddie and Hancock planning council chair attended. The interim town manager stated, quote, I don't expect the planning council will move everything aside just to deal with the, down, the town plan. The four sentence town plan amendment was read and select board member Laura Streets made a motion to accept the proposed amendment. Laura's motion was seconded by Don McDowell. Laura further stated that quote, as a public person, we are actually really disappointed the town plan went through with the language. If it is a matter of changing a sentence, I don't think we'll get any pushback. The planning council chair stated, Quote, the council had prioritized this, the town plan, after S-100 changes and scheduled to end more or less in the spring. Right now, that's council's priority. He also stated, I haven't heard a directive from you, the select, meaning the select board, yet as to should this town plan amendment be ratified in the next meeting, the next month, after S-100, Act 47 is complete. And he additionally, you know, restated that S100 was the priority for the planning council and that uh, they, they wanted to focus on that. 
the interim town manager responded, I guess we're hoping it could be done in the next month or so. It's a five or 10 minute thing. I don't think we're asking you guys to meet five or, time, five or six times a month. Just add five to 10 minutes to an existing meeting. Scott Johnstone from the Moore, uh, Morrisville Water and Light GM was in attendance with village trustees and stated, quote, we agree it should be a fairly simple matter, five to 10 minutes, and then it'll take a couple months for public hearings. Later, the select board voted unanimously to approve Laura's motion to accept the proposed language amendment. There are additional email communications in March of this year where the interim town manager made clear that the town plan amendment should proceed independent of the zoning change schedule and explain the town plan amendment and the zoning change schedule, quote, are two different paths and shouldn't be considered dueling initiatives. In regard to the statements that construction jobs would be lost and that there would be an economic impact to the town. Well, I took that very seriously and I did further research and conferred with legal counsel and followed up with an email to the zoning administrator this past weekend. But to summarize the email, with the goal of ensuring the best outcomes for our community, based on my research and consultations with legal counsel, I'd like you and Gary to consider the following. As I understand it, and as confirmed with legal counsel, the statute only addresses what happens if an application is denied under the proposed zoning. Approved applications enter the appeal period and become final if no appeal is filed. Therefore, the DRB can act on proposed applications as they would on any other. You as a zoning administrator and the DRB can and should take the action you deem appropriate within the prescribed statutory time periods. Applications that are approved become final if they are not appealed to the environmental court within the statutory time period, regardless of the status of the proposed zoning amendments. Applications that are denied may be reconsidered under the current zoning regulations if the proposed amendments are either rejected or not approved within 150 days of the select board's first public hearing notice. The timing of the select board and trustees action on the proposed bylines should not delay decisions on applications being considered by the zoning administrator or DRB. It's crucial that we maintain the prescribed statutory time periods for decision making. So that was a long drawn out uh, statement by me, but You know, I was, I was hired by this town to do everything that I can to make improvements. And I take that very seriously. And I take it very seriously when someone makes statements that I cannot find to be factual. So I appreciate all of you for taking the time. Thank you, Brent. I, would, I just want to thank you, Brent, for that clarification. I, I don't think we need to dig into the weeds on this. It's, uh, you've documented it very well, and I appreciate it. Say, and I'm looking forward to looking forward to uh, I can just say just a couple of words more, but yeah, I'm looking forward to um, dealing with these zoning bylaws later this summer and certainly looking forward to this town plan amendment that we've been waiting a very long time for. And I think it's fair to say that the planning council did move to approve the amendment to the town plan on july 9th so that will be coming to our board yes i've had, I've had discussion since then uh, with one of the members and i think um, we spoke and we're going to be meeting in person i i think that i, I don't understand where the breakdown in communication occurred um, but i'm very concerned that any statements are made um, that could question either the select board's motivations or the town administration's motivations. And if I found something that was, you know, factual, I would be here today uh, explaining that and apologizing on behalf of the town. Can't apologize on behalf of the select board if, if I were to find something that the select board had done. But, um, I, you know, I, I believe that we should be moving forward to improve the community and we can have disagreements about what is best for the community, um, but that we should all focus on doing our best to have uh, proactive uh, disagreements if, if you know people do have disagreements and just try to move forward with the town business as efficiently as possible. Thank you, Brent. Um, so I, I, I appreciate what you're saying. Um, 
I, I personally hate the blame game. We've spent years um, of different people calling each other out. Um, we have, we as a select board have got to build trust. Um, so I think we still have kind of a rough road ahead because there's, as you're discovering, there's a lot of baggage <laughs> and it's, I would hope to, that we're not going to have to spend and waste your time trying to track it back because there's so much that a lot of us don't know how, how it happened. It has happened. I am a little confused by your statement because the town plan and the new zoning are very different. Correct. So um, that was a little confusing to me is that you were, you know, the motion I made was town plan mm -hmm. and the, my understanding was the concern was we were trying to pass the zoning. Right. Um, so and we were given a schedule and maybe it, as loose as it was, I was under the impression also that we were continuing on and, you know, it just didn't happen. So I, I think there's, so I'm let me clarify. Yeah, and I think yeah. it's just confusing as to, to talking about both the town plan and the zoning. Well, uh, that's that's where the the issue is. Everything I could find was that the town administration or the select board commented on, or pr provided directive on, or provided motions for was a town plan. Um, what I was told is that that the town administration was pushing the zoning changes and I could find nothing that that uh, supported that <coughs> what I could find was a town plan I, I could I could include you know additional information about how that was tied together and repeatedly it was attempted to be separated and that's why I want to bring those that's why I brought up the town plan because that's the only thing that I could find where it was requested that that move forward move forward more quickly. And that was a five to 10 minute change with public notices taking months. Um, but as Chris has said, that, that was submitted, uh, I think it was filed today, right? With the town clerk. So I appreciate you allowing me to clarify. And if somebody has uh, more information that I can consider, I'll, I'll be up here sharing that with the community because I, I do, again, I, I feel very strongly that we should be operating with facts when we make decisions about our community. And you know, we I'll just add, we certainly are guilty of pushing the town plan. We, you know, that's something that we've talked about a lot, and, and I know your motion is evidence of that. So, but we haven't been. We need to get the zoning done too. So we I need mean, to get that done. I have to say, I, it was when we haven't done it. I certainly haven't been on planning and DRB understand. And it does seem like things are just, and I'm not faulting you or anybody because we've been in huge transition. Uh, but it does seem like um, things, you know, we were talking about this and then now we're not, and it's very confusing to yeah. try to keep track. And I, I think we're on the right track, but I also would just encourage everybody to not take it personal. Yeah. There's a lot of anxiety, and uh, we've been years dealing with with trying to make changes and um it, it, again it's going to take us years to do trust build trust and i think everybody's just got to leave their egos at the door and um and realize that this is business and, and understand that our constituents are paying a lot of money and that you know if they have concerns you know and just not take it personal because I, I i understand we all take our jobs very seriously um but we've got a lot of baggage we're dealing with, and that's for everybody. So before we move forward, George, Richard, anything to add? Richard? No, I'm good. Thanks, okay. Brent. Okay, well, Brent, I'm going to thank you for that, and uh, I'm going to move on then. Thank you for that clarification. Number five, July 10th storm update. I believe this is you again. So uh, we have approximately 25 locations in our community that uh, will, would qualify if, if FEMA, you know, accepts this storm. Um, so my, yeah, I, I'm not going to go through every single potential FEMA site, but I'll, I'll list 
you know, some of the big ones. And I also want to uh, provide a couple of, you know, uh, sincere appreciation to a couple of people. So, um, you know, Randolph Road uh, was not taken out. It, it remained strong, uh, but it, it was, um, it, it was, what? Weakened. Well, um, and causes concern that it's narrow and it's low. Um, so that's something that we might want to consider uh, for our hazard mitigation uh, submittal. Uh, so I made note of that. Can I ask also, having just traveled on Randolph, uh, the highway department is actually looking at another spot that's on the bridge. Yes. Has, are you, has that been noted? Or is oh, yeah. That, uh, is that part of it? Because there's actually two spots. Yeah, there's three. It's a, I, I have the measurements for that. It's quite significant. Um, are you including all those into Randolph or are they each individual? They're individual. Okay, thank you. Uh, but that, that Randolph Road, the small bridge, is not one of the sites. Um, so Randolph Road between Newland and Campbell Road, wash out uh, by the headway, uh, low exit side of the bridge, that's right now labeled as site 25. Um, the dimensions of that is eight feet depth by 18 feet length by 16 feet width. Another one on Randall. Randolph Road is 4548 Randolph Road, Site 23. That's, that was being repaired today. That was uh, five feet depth by 18 feet width and 12 feet length. Um, another one, Randolph Road uh, next to Gray Farm, Site 24, repairing that today. Uh, five feet depth by eight feet by 35 feet. When I say, you know, repairing that, some of these were triage day of. Several of them were actually triage day of. Um, to, to make them passable. Uh, Upper Mountain Road, South End, Site 20, water buyers were placed there beforehand to try to mitigate damage, um, but it was still significantly damaged. There was a culvert, 97% uh, blocked. Uh, and so uh, stone, stoning and regraveling is needed there. Um, 755 Golf Course Road, eight by 10 by two foot deep. <coughs> Stone dumped and spread for initial triage. 3218 Stagecoach Road, uh, massive erosion. I actually went down in there to help measure it um, on the day of. Uh, 36 and a half feet deep, uh, 40 feet, 45 feet wide. Uh, that's site 30. And I, I just want to say thank you to Jerry Audi for uh, offering to assist our crew. Um, met him again and was just so appreciative for for Jerry and his willingness to to help the town out. Um, you know, there's this I could go on and on uh, and list multiple other sites. But again, it's approximately 25 that will qualify for FEMA. And then Judy, can you pull up a, a picture, please? So that's um, that's Turcott Road in Wolcott. And the reason why I asked that be pulled up is because uh, part of our highway crew, you know, an individual, Lou Keller, um, that's what he woke up to very early morning. Obviously couldn't get out. Um, so he got permission from his neighbor to be able to drive through the field and get here so that he could help the community repair their roads while his family uh, was left dealing with that. So, I, you know, I really want to thank Luke and I want to recognize him publicly. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Brent. Any um, any further comments from the board? I will just say I I think you and I, Brent, maybe the entire board has received uh, emails from people around town, very appreciative of the town crew and being able to restore roads and get people out of their uh, get people out of their homes and back to semi normal as quickly as possible. I sure can. I think I had a number of hands. Did I have one in the back first? No? Okay. Go ahead. James Brewster. Um, Brent, can you tell me, was there any sign that debris from the recent road clearing in the past year contributed to any of these culverts plugging? Because I know that I've seen evidence of that on the Upper Elmore Mountain Road, where the debris that was you, you know cut off with the whatever they used to shear down, fell in the dishes and was washing into the culverts. So I'm just curious. Um, I don't have any evidence specific to uh, this, this storm, 
but I have been going around on my own um, and with some residents uh, taking pictures of ditches, um, taking pictures of culverts and immediately updating a uh, highway. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, on, the, on the day of, uh, I helped Kevin remove probably a 120 pound log that was uh, not blocking a culvert, but it was still a very fast rushing water into the culvert and uh, we saw it. So we, we took the time to remove it. Um, I don't know if the water was strong enough to push that large of a piece of, of a tree trunk down. Um, but, you know, I, I think that with any organization there needs to be um, continuous improvement. You'll hear me saying that all the time, uh, as long as I'm here. And I've already initiated um, that sort of expectation um, and looking for solutions so that when any sort of work is being done, there's the right equipment in the pickup trucks to deal with 99% of any issues that are encountered, including removing debris from ditches. And I know that's long winded, um, but I don't have any direct evidence of debris yeah. causing the issues, but it was already being worked on. I can tell you, I personally pulled my ditches out. Um, I pulled them out because I was concerned about the ditches. Um, I didn't have any problem with them. Um, Julie? Um, Julia Campania, Morristown. Um, thank you again for, to the town, obviously. Where the golf course road, the, the location of the big washout was across from us. In the previous storm, another section was washed out and the crew came with very large riprap, which is very expensive riprap. I understand these things having worked in it. So my purpose of speaking tonight was to go on record at a meeting so that my emails to you don't sound like ex parte communications. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Laura, everybody for responding. Um, I've been active in, in FEMA and response, but going forward, I would like to generate conversations and generate um, interest in preventative measures that, that we can begin implementing. And Chris shared that maybe LCPC is the agency to take a lead on this conversation, but we can't keep throwing money and being in emergency response mode and not equally pursue remedies and prevention that we can. Um, so I just wanted to go on record that I've been writing to our national um, U.S. Congress, our state legislators, the governor, all of you folks, to just get a conversation going that we need, this is the new normal and we need to respond. We can't go back and just respond to things as we have in the past, we have to be proactive now. So thank you for your, you're already on the ditching monitoring. And, and it can be little things like that. I will share that our brook, we've lived at our property for over 30 years. Our brook breached its banks and was a river flowing through our pasture for probably 400 feet. That's never happened in the whole time we've lived there. So thank you. I think we're all hearing stories of things that have never happened before with the last summer's storm and this summer's storm. And I would just agree, having been to all those flood mitigation meetings with LCPC, that that is, uh, that is a good place to pass your concerns on, you know, as we begin to think about mitigation in the future, because we're going to have more. We know that. Hi, Alex here. I live here in Morrisville. Um, I was just wondering, is because we are still working through the FEMA process from last year's flooding, and now there's this year's flooding, how that sort of potentially complicates things or doesn't complicate things, especially where damage may overlap or compound between the two floods and, and what happens once we have next year's flooding. 
Well, as, and as I said, I mean, um, LCPC is taking the lead on this and taking a regional lead on this as we look around. Um, those of us in Morristown that had to deal with some flooding, had to deal with some flooding, our, our surrounding communities, Hardwick and Johnson and Cambridge in particular, have had to deal with it more than we've had to deal with. Uh, but we are looking at, a, a, you know, regional solutions. And we do have this chunk of money that I've been talking about multiple through multiple meetings. And we are going to be putting in some pre-applications to try and harvest some of that money for, for Morrisville. We, we clearly need resources towards this. The water's coming downhill again. And uh, we're lucky that we live in a broad valley, but that we're not going to be uh, immune to flooding events in the future. And um, we're trying to trying trying to get that money and, and trying to look at mitigation projects that, that we can to uh, alleviate some of these concerns in the future. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Mason Kummer, uh, LaPorte Road. I am this year's Morrisville Community Garden Steward. Um, quite a blow getting put underwater again, second year in a row. Um, fortunately, we didn't get completely wiped out like last year, um, but we are very much interested in looking for a new, uh, new land to put the garden on. I really find it important that it's close to the village. Uh, so many people ride their bikes and walk to the garden. Um, I'm aware there is not much land available in town. I've kind of been looking around to see what options there might be. And the only place that seems reasonable to me at this time it would be People's Academy, if they'd be willing to share any of their space, um, particularly the front section where they have their pollinator loop already, or where they have their high school greenhouse and small garden there. Um, yeah, I'd just like to open the conversation. I don't know if you guys are the right group or somebody at Peoples that I could talk to and start talking about this as a potential option for us. It's Mason, correct? Yes. Yeah, thank you, Mason, for coming and bringing that up. I think for all of us that have certainly visited the uh, Oxbow last week, we saw what happened to the gardens. I was down there today. I was kind of surprised that they weren't more damaged than they were. Yes. But, okay. but clearly for all the money and time and effort that people are putting into those gardens, it's, this is two years in a row. And yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. It's probably time to start looking at some alternate sites. And I'll say, I was actively against having them there this year for this exact reason. Uh, we didn't start looking until the last year and a half. Um, I did as much research as I could. Um, there's not a lot of land. Um, you know, I think there was less damage down there because I have to say time came in and basically said it being a little bit longer on our waistbands and so there was yeah. things um, that kept things from going down. Um, and I was down there and watched the water. So it came in a little bit different this year. Yeah, it was kind of just back up from the dam instead of just like straight right. across. Exactly. Across the Which helps, but it's you know. still what it's done. So, yeah, the, um, so uh, there are definitely a group of people I think that would be glad to help you. Um, I think, unfortunately, you may look at a line or, you know, see if you can find somebody to donate or, or maybe to let us use the line. Because um, it's, I mean, I'm sorry, it takes way too much work. When I was down here, when I saw them going in, you know, in yeah. the middle of July, boy, it was everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it was worth a shot for us to try again. Huh? It was worth a shot for us to try again this year, but no. after a second. Yeah, Dan, because there is water and stuff down there, there's an infrastructure that he didn't want to walk away with. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you, Mason. Yes. Any other comments about the July 10th storm? Go One ahead. thing that I would mention to Mason is, is that we don't know what was in that water that yeah. came downstream and it's contamination of that area there. So I would caution people. Yeah, yeah, we've been researching about it. Yeah. We're definitely, Could you come up to the, Mason, come up to the microphone. 
yeah, we know for certain that anything that had fruited or like lettuce and herbs and stuff completely toast. The only thing we're unsure of is like tomatoes and peppers if they haven't grown yet. Like if there's no sign of fruit on it, if they will now fruit, if they'd be okay, but we're Have still. Have you got the soil testing yet? We didn't this year. Last year we did. Um, we have a meeting tomorrow for the garden that I'm sure we'll discuss that. Yeah. Evelyn, thank you. Hi, Evelyn Throne. Um, yeah, Jerry and I uh, spent time uh, looking at different things that happened in on July 10th. One of them was Oxbow Park. Um, it was obviously devastating to see again, not as bad as last time, the water didn't cut so quickly, but what we did notice, and you know, I'm sure you guys are aware of this, especially working with flood mitigation, but as we took the circle around the back and we looked at where the water came through and where it exited, it came through pretty much where there were no trees, where there were, was only brush, it's the easiest way to get in, and as it as it you know starts to starts to hit that spot where there's no trees, that's the easiest way to get out. It starts to scour out, and it becomes an unstoppable force. It's just a channeling across from no treat area to another no treat area, and you know I know we are going to we're talking. I seriously appreciate the c comment about prevention. We can't keep trying, you know. We have to put more into prevention, I think, than into fixing. And really, my feeling strongly is that we need to have a whole meeting about Oxbow Park. This is so important, just about Oxbow Park, and 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 have experts, have have the have you there, have community members that care about it, um, and hydrologists or whatever, you know, whoever can work on, to understand this, uh, Peter Danforth. And we need to, there's a very good chance of my, my belief strongly is that we need to let go of the whole bottom half of the park. We have to plant the crap out of around the, sorry, is that a good word? Around the outside of, of it. And then maybe, yeah, it's just a park. And, and just, you know, and, and tree some of it. We could even have a walking path through that doesn't, you know, wouldn't get that affected by water coming. But we can't just let that water go straight across again because it just silts up the other side of the of the river and then you're you know you're you're extra extra messed up. So anyway. Thank you, Evelyn. I just want to say when I went down there today and saw it after the water receded that you're right, that cut through the lower oxbow, through the lower deck is almost in the same place as it was before. And um, but we do have to have that discussion. I know several of us have talked about that. Um, we, uh, Laura and I, I know, went down there together last week after the flood, and we're looking at the band shell, we're looking at the community garden, we're thinking about soccer, we're thinking about, you know, recreation, we're thinking about um, a, a site that generates revenue for the town. Uh, we, you know, there's a lot of different things to be considered. But um, we know the river's coming back. I, I said that earlier. And, we need that's kind of like the statement of the obvious i just want to say i I've, I've been pushing for a year and a half to get this, this is an agenda item um and it's incredibly frustrating to me when i walk down there that this select board has not put it on the agenda and that we have to have go through this a second time and we as a town have got to stop being reactive and be proactive because it's costing the taxpayers a fortune. Not even, I'm sorry. Yeah, not even just an agenda item, a whole meeting just yeah. for that. And I will say, I mean, the flood mitigation work is being proactive. Yeah, that's right. So, yes. and we've been talking about that for two or three months now. Go ahead. Sheila Tarbox, I have a, uh, I had to walk on Stovite Trail, so today. And everywhere we turned, there were trees down. So trees are not going to save that land. I mean, every there was trees and branches wrapped around that first bridge that you go underneath, and it's like it sounds really loud. Those trees were up to where the walkway was, and that's pretty high. So 
trees weren't saved there. You know, my thing is planting a tree is not gonna save stuff because there are so many trees on that trail that are down from the water. That's my comment because yeah. it's like they're all over the place. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, any comments from the board? I'd like to move on. I think we have a guest in the room that's here to talk about an item coming up. He's a grown boy in EC, yeah. Okay, I'm going to move on to old business, and I'm just going to change the order if it's okay with the board, because I think you're here to talk about Walton. So if you'd like to, uh, we have two updates here. The first on the agenda is the update of the Geltz Bridge, but I don't believe there's anyone here to talk about Geltz. Uh, I don't believe. But we do have somebody here to talk about Walton, so let's do that first, and we can send you home. Or you can leave, you can stay though. <laughs> Nathan Cody for Blowing Cody. So we're working on the bridge. We're pouring the deck this week. This is the Walton Road this Bridge. This is the Walton Road Bridge. And we're pouring the deck either Wednesday or Thursday. And then once that happens, it's just a progression of membrane, paving, backfilling, and finishing up all the little things so we can open it back up. So um, I'm sorry, your first name again? Nathan. Nathan. So Nathan, my understanding, was there some issues with the head walls as well? The back walls were as bad as the deck, so we had to take those out as well and rebuild them. And so that added some more time. And so that's why we're going to end up being well, roughly a month from now when we'll be done. And that was questioned when we started this, but it wasn't we certain it up, until we ripped it apart. Yep. Right. So that's part of it. So do you have any? Um, do you have any idea of? Do we have a completion date? An estimated completion date at this point? I think we're at uh, August 25th okay. ish. Okay. I know when I talked to Derek, our town foreman there, mm -hmm. a couple of months ago, he had mentioned that you guys found that those, um, those head walls were not in good shape and it was going to back us up about a month. Yeah. Okay. And that's basically what happened. Yeah. I will say, living up where I do, just above the bridge there on Mud City, I. <clears throat> Well, we appreciate this is going to this is going to change now that I say it, but I there's been very few comments about the bridge, but I'm sure I'm sure people are going to be uh, glad to hear it's going to be hopefully over in a four or five weeks. But with the short detour, that makes it easier. Yeah, yeah. Any other any questions from the board? No. Thank you for coming in. Thank you very much, Nathan. Thanks for your work. Yeah. yeah thank you. Geltz Road. Uh, so you'll have to rely on me for an update on Gouts Road. Um, asked Mr. Mumley if he could cut, he could attend, but he was he was unavailable. Um, he sent me an email summary this afternoon. Um, I had seen an RFP with a with a pretty aggressive schedule that uh, could, if everything comes together, you know, possibly before the first day of school. Uh, we could have things finished. Uh, some people call me a pessimist. I call myself a realist, so I don't want to have that date out there as expectation. Um, CSI is the contractor that um, precasts the bridge pieces uh, and has completed it. Um, there's some curb walls that had to be ordered, uh, and uh, those, those are waiting to come in. And it's expected that they'll be on schedule to deliver the bridge pieces by July 29th. Uh, we we had a RFP process for contractor to install the bridge. Um, MSI came in approximately $120,000 um, below the next highest or next lowest bidder, and. Um, but they have some issues with, with timing. Uh, in an email, they indicated that if the timing isn't as per the RFP, there might be some issues. So um, I, I, I called up MSI today because uh, the, the contract is still pending, even though they're the lowest bidder. Wanted to find out directly what the status was with that contract um, and why it might be still not signed. Um, I got a phone call back but wasn't able to take it. And then I, I uh, saw an email um, from Lee Tillotson at MSI. 
and he suggested that I meet with him and another person at MSI tomorrow. So I'm going to try to do that at noon. Um, I responded to him so that I could uh, speak with them and make sure that everything's on target. We have a um, we have telephone telecommunications uh, equipment uh, that goes across that span. I found out two weeks ago about that and uh, having had you know, work orders in for my personal home back in the day with consolidated communications that set up a red flag for me. So um, I've made several phone calls to consolidated communications. Is it consolidated? Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, to try to make sure that that work order is uh, going to be completed because I don't want that to interrupt any installation. Um, Morrisville Water and Light, they need to to remove some electrical lines that uh, are above the location. Been in communication with Scott Johnstone and his team about uh, when they can get that done. To hopefully um, that won't delay the installation of the bridge when it comes in. If it is, there's a possibility of subcontracting that out. Um, that's I haven't talked to Scott and his team about that. I'm still uh, hopeful that they, they will be able to get the work done. Um, and they were not given the expected heads up, I think. So that's why Scott is, you know, not been able to commit yet, but we're, we're seeing that it's looking like it will be okay. And if not, we can rely on subcontractors. So um, all that to say that, you know, potentially August month end, uh, but also, you know, one, one small, you know, one, one small issue could push it out into late September. Um, so I hope, hope to have more concrete information within the next week. Great. Thank you. I know that is the bridge that's garnered a lot of, a lot of attention, much more than, much more than Walton. Yeah. Any comments from the board? Comments from the room? Okay, moving on. Can I prove? Go ahead. Come on up. Jerry Throne. Uh, at, at the last uh, planning council meeting last week, uh, after uh, Brent witnessed what he did and and, uh, and and left, I think there was a discussion uh, about the uh, parking on is, Pleasant Street. Is this about Geltz Geltz Road? No. Yeah, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong, okay. wrong item. You can, you're going to be up in just a second, though. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other conversation about Geltz? Okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, approve the warrants. I would um, move to approve the warrants. I have a motion by Chris. Second. Second by George. Discussion? All those in favor of approving the warrants? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm abstaining. Okay, so Richard, your vote is aye. Chris? Aye. George? Aye. Laura? Abstaining. And the chair is voting aye. So that'd be four to zero to one. Community comments. <laughs> Can't believe you have something to say. I'm Jerry Throne, and I just wanted to uh, mention that uh, I know Chris was uh, at the uh, Planning Council meeting, and after uh, the discussion uh, about the town plan versus zoning, uh, there was a discussion that ensued about uh, parking on uh, Pleasant Street, and in general, concerns about uh, cars cutting through Copley parking lot, municipal lot, and the whole, the whole uh, thing seems to me that uh, with all the concerns I heard, and some of which uh, are, are my own as well, that it would really be helpful, I think, if we had a consultant uh, to look at the parking situation. Uh, Mason, you were there as well, and uh, Mason had some suggestions, and I, I, I think that uh, to just implement something uh, on a short-term basis just doesn't seem to make sense. 
uh, we need a more comprehensive kind of plan to help the circulation in town, not only on Pleasant Street, but Portland Street, because they're tied together with people trying to cut through and avoid the light. Uh, it, it, it can be a dangerous situation. So I, I just wanted to uh, make my uh, observations uh, express and uh, express my concerns. Yeah, thank you. I, w I will just uh, add very quickly that there was a parking committee and a parking study done just two years ago. So it might be a document worth looking at, see if there's something in there. I don't recall anything on Pleasant Street, but there was a lot written about the municipal parking lot. The original plan for the parking lot. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, Tony had his hand up first. I'm sorry, Alex. Uh, Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. Uh, was just wondering if you would consider the stagecoach road being a main artery from Morrisville to Stowe? Would I? I think I would, yes. I would, for the main artery from Johnson Hyde Park to Stowe. In fact, if I'm correct here, if I'm correct, we do get additional monies for the maintenance of that road because of the volume of traffic on that road. That and, uh, Coach and, Randolph. and Randolph is the other one, yeah. So, yeah, I would consider it. I just wanted to voice my concerns. I've seen it wash away for the last 10 months. Yeah. I take it every day, by the way. Yeah, and you know, and, and Tony, it's a great observation. And I lived in Johnson 40 years ago, and I used to take that road to work quite a bit. And boy, back then it just didn't wash out. And now it's washed out parts of it several times in the last couple of years. Alex. Hi, Alex here again. I live here in Morrisville. Um, I just want to comment on sort of like um, cabining committee discussion to remit. I know that my comment and sort of addressing the select board rather than the committee, but my comment on the last committee meeting for the charter was sort of recorded uh, speaking to whether the charter should be discussed together with the local option tax, um, tax issues. I do want, I do think it is a bit problematic that select board members have been sloppy about keeping to the committee's remit. I know, I think that that's probably because every select board member is a member of the committee. I feel that the select board members have been treating it as an extension of the select board rather than a separate body. Um, and looking at that, the committee is only set up to deal with the charter and not with issues not in the charter. And so I think that the select board has had the opportunity two weeks ago to expand the remit of the charter to also deal with the local option tax, not as part of the charter, and has the, has had the opportunity to do that today and has not taken that opportunity. And so I think that issue should be removed from tomorrow's agenda as not within the remit of the committee. Thank you, Alex. Any other community comments? Um. Yeah, sure. How to express this? This it's a it's a little bit about identify the, yourself, please. Hi, Evelyn Throne. It's about the parking lot, and it's not just the parking lot. Like I think, it's it's the fact that we're going to be adding so many uh, houses, so many apartments, and so so much. The whole traffic flow around town is something that needs to be considered, and how to add enough parking spaces. What to do with the Moco? You know, parking lot. How to? Uh, there's going to be a, a there's going to be a building right past Moco, and you know how to what you know whether to have the sidewalk go straight down. How to how to improve the sidewalks, where to put the parking, how to improve the flow. It's all. It's not just a parking lot in and of itself. Thank you. Mason Kemmer. Um, I am a traffic engineer or traffic design engineer. I have started working with the town and discussing um, improvements for downtown traffic movements because um, it's definitely less than safe in some spots. Um, 
a safety audit is underway. I believe you're meeting with VTrans in a few weeks about that on Portland and Bridge Street, because that one in particular is horrible. Um, to address parking, um, I know a lot of people think we don't have enough parking, but we just had our 4th of July parade when half of the parking on the main streets were not accessible and didn't seem to be a huge problem. Everybody made it here and was able to attend the parade. So more parking, I don't necessarily see as a, a, a priority that the safety I feel is more concerning, but thank you. Thank you, Mason. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. Uh, schedule, meetings. We have um, tomorrow night, 5.30, Charter Committee meeting right here. And the next select board meeting will be August 5th at 5.30 in this room, of course. And then on the 19th, August 19th, we will have a public hearing for the town plan amendment that we were talking about earlier. And following that will be the regular, the second select board meeting of the month. I would entertain a motion. I would, uh, is there any other, that's it. other business? There is no other business. Okay, I will, I would move to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Okay. I have a second by George. Do I have any discussion? All those in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Thank you, folks. Aye.